Hi, I'm Paris, and on this Sunday afternoon, I'm going to set up my Windows 10 computer to start mining Ether. Ether is the coin of the realm of Ethereum. Ethereum has a number of similarities to Bitcoin, another cryptocurrency, but whereas Bitcoin now is being mined by very specialized and expensive machines, with Ethereum, you can still get some mining done with a regular old home computer if you have a modern graphics card. And honestly, what made me decide to try mining Ether with my system is an article on a tech website I ran across by chance that mentioned the NVIDIA GeForce 1060 card. It's pretty much the low-end card on the NVIDIA side of graphics cards that's still worthwhile to try mining. You can mine with a regular older video card or even just the CPU, but the progress will be so slow, and though you may eventually earn some portion of an ether, the cost of electricity that earns you that is going to be far more than the value of that ether, most likely. But with the 1060 or 1070 or 1080 card, you can actually come out ahead as things stand right now, this is constantly changing both the price of electricity that you pay, the price of the video cards, which is shooting up now as people are saying, hey, if I'm going to have my computer on anyway, why not have my video card do some number crunching and maybe earn me a few dollars? And the other variable being the difficulty level, which it gets involved to explain that, but basically it means the more people that decide to start mining this cryptocurrency, there's a built-in factor of difficulty that will go up that makes it harder to mine, which means your video card is going to have to work that much harder and that much longer to pull out the same amount of ether. But in late June 2017, I think I'm going to be able to make a few bucks with this, just like I did mining Bitcoin a few years ago before those dedicated machines came to rule all the Bitcoin mining. So while the mining is good, I'm going to get in and give it a try. A big plus is that I already own the video card and already have a system that's suitable for doing this. You can mine with other hardware. The AMD video cards are especially well suited for doing this, but the prices of those have skyrocketed beyond where NVIDIA cards have gotten to. But for the average user who already has a relatively new computer with a newer video card in it, maybe they use it for gaming. When the computer's on but you're not doing the gaming, let's see if it can make you some money. So you've got your 64-bit Windows 10 computer, your newer video card. You're going to need to download some software onto your computer that will do the mining. You're going to need to set up a mining address where the earnings or the credits that you get can go towards. And if you ever want to see more than numbers on a screen in your pursuit of Ether, you'll need an account at an exchange where you can actually take Bitcoin, Ether, other types of cryptocurrencies turn them in, well, sell them basically for somebody else's dollars, which then get deposited into your bank account. The most complicated part of this is creating and modifying the batch files. If you don't know what those are, it's basically a text file. It's like you go into Word and you type in some words and symbols and numbers, but when you save that text as a batch file, .bat, Windows interprets it differently. Instead of seeing it as something for you to read, it sees it as something for it to read, and it actually will go through and follow the instructions and the commands. That is required, basically playing around in DOS in order to get this working on your computer. I'm going to go through more of an overview here of everything that's required from start to finish, what you can do in an afternoon. If you're still not sure what to do or you don't feel comfortable setting this up on your computer, probably best to go and do some more reading on the web. You don't want to have your computer working hard to mine these ether and then have them disappear into the ether. I'm going to be following along the steps as spelled out by Crypto Badger, and I'll link to this website down below the video. This particular page explains how to set up an Ethereum mining rig with Windows and either an AMD or NVIDIA card. I'll link to this page on Crypto Badger's website down below this video. He has some very good guides on doing this more for the professional or very serious amateur rather than Sunday afternoon setup kind of like I'm interested in. So I'm going to skip some of the steps I don't think would apply to you and start step six to allocate at least 16 gigabytes of virtual memory. You, that's recommended for using the mining software that he's going to suggest. You go to your system properties, advanced, performance settings, performance options here, and change the virtual memory to 16, 384. You can see it's currently set for three gigabytes. We'll tell it not to do it automatically. And this is going to take a portion of your hard drive space and let Windows treat it as virtual memory so the mining application will have some more room to work with. 
You do need to restart your computer for those changes to take effect. I don't think you'll want to make the other changes if you're going to be using your computer for regular purposes. So let's jump to step nine to generate a wallet address. Click here to download Geth for Windows, which brings me to this website. We're going to want the Windows version. I'm going to run that. Time to work a little in DOS. Type CMD here for command prompt. So I'll click on this. Now I need to get to the directory where the program is that I just downloaded. If your DOS skills are a little rusty, that's how we get over to the default installation directory and then to set up a new account. Now this is very, very, very important because um, if you forget your password, there is no, hey, email me my password as far as I know. So you'll need to uh, make absolutely certain you remember this password and also you're going to want to back up your wallet files so that you can get to them even if your computer crashes. If you only ever have $20 in it, it's not such a big deal, but if you do accumulate some ether and the value goes up 10 times and suddenly it's a couple thousand dollars, you won't want to lose it. You'll notice when you type that the cursor doesn't move and nothing appears. It looks like you're not typing anything at all, but that's for security. Hopefully they match. There's my wallet address between the two brackets. I'm going to copy it. I've copied it, pasted it into a document, and store it on the computer, and store it in your backup location, which might be a flash drive, the same place you're going to store your wallet keys. Now's a good time to also grab your key store. This contains the encrypted data that will allow access to your ether. By the way, the app data folder that you can see up top, that's a hidden, so you will have to show hidden folders to be able to open that up to get to the key store folder. I have a folder on the desktop called Ethereum Wallet Backup with these two things inside of it. I'm gonna keep that there and I'm going to send a copy to a flash drive. Well, you're out in the wild west of tech here, so there are bad things on this site, but this is where I need to go to download this mining software, apparently. At your own risk, here it is to download. For Windows, the file you want is the zip file. Download that and extract it. I've taken the extracted folder and moved it to my desktop easy to find and work with here. These are the files inside and I'm going to need to create a batch file. I'm going to create this and edit it with Notepad. I haven't put anything in it yet, but I'm saving it as a batch file to make sure that works. So you have to save, save as type, change it, it'll default to .txt. When you put .bat at the end of the name and tell it to save, that will save it as a Windows batch file. Now I'm going to edit it and put in the information just as it is listed on the website, but you have to put your wallet address. You don't want it going to someone else. I've copied the information from the website. I've pasted it into this. I do want to change the your wallet address line to my actual wallet address. Let me go grab that from that file I backed up. With copy and paste, you're less likely to make a mistake. And I've got to add in a zero X at the front of that. I saved the file, so I should be able to start it mining just by double clicking on this. One more thing, that file, the way it's set up, will work in a mining pool. You can mine individually, which means your computer will work on mining an ether, but it can take a long, long time. And the way a lot of people do it is you join a pool where everyone's systems work together and you get credit for the part of it that your computer mined that then gets deposited into your wallet. But you don't have to use a pool or you can use a different pool. The instructions I'm following use ethermine.org and that mining pool does take 1% of all the ether that gets earned. Let's see if we can earn any at all. Here we go. I did not read that as it went by. They're recommending I update my video driver. That would make sense. I should have checked that. Um, it wants to let data in and out. I guess I gotta trust it. So where it says new job, that's data that's being downloaded. It's sort of like a distributed computing project like Boink 
where, and I do run that on this computer. I run it for um, SETI and for World Community Grid. I'm hoping I can continue to run that on the CPU while the Ethereum gets mined on the GPU. Share found and share accepted there in green. I'm guessing that's a good thing. I'll let this run for an hour or so and then see about coming back and looking into my, oh, we've got something else going on, and see if I can look into my wallet and see if anything's been deposited. An hour and a half later, I'm up to 16 shares. Well, what does that mean? I can take my wallet address and go to ethermine.org with that and find out how I've done. Now this was at the end of one hour, so I don't think this has the latest, my last few shares, but let's say it was about an hour and the unpaid balance is 0 0.00026 of an ether. That's about a quarter of a thousandth of an ether and that took about an hour. So it would take four hours to do a full thousandth, which means it would take 40 hours to do a hundredth. Now, Ether currently goes for about $300 an Ether. So one one hundredth of an Ether would be equal to about $3. So that means in 40 hours of mining, I could make about $3. So if I had the computer on and this program running two or three hours a day, every day of the month, we're looking at, oh, six or $7 a month that I would make just having this run in the background. Now you have to subtract the cost of electricity, extra electricity to run the GPU at a full rate. So it's pulling in more watts. So there's a calculation for that to see if you're actually really making any money. But if I got really serious about this and left it running, let's say 20 hours a day, I would end up making the better part of $50 a month. Then you think, well, I do have room to add another video card in the system. Oh, now I'm up to nearly $100 a month. And that's how you get sucked into doing this. And what if Ether doubles in value? What if I can get my video card more efficient by going in and hacking a little? I can get more work done for less power, making more money. So how do you actually get the money in cash or at least in numbers that are in your bank account? Well, you can download a program that will allow you to transfer the Ether from your wallet to an exchange account. I like Coinbase. I know there's lots of controversy about it now, especially in regards to Ether. But um, I've had Bitcoin sitting in there since I did my Bitcoin video three years ago, maybe. And I the value of the, the amount of Bitcoins remained the same. I haven't done additional mining. And it was worth around $9, I think, when I stopped. It's now worth $35. I looked in the wallet today and it's gone from nine to 35, so I've had 350% increase. What if that had been $90,000 I'd had, it'd be now worth $350,000 three years later. This is what gets people excited, but what if I had 350,000 and the next day, Bitcoin did one of these and I ended up back with the 90,000 or less. So it's a game you have limited control over and some people are gonna make a lot of money some people are going to lose a lot of money, but the people who will continue to make money are the people who build the hardware that lets you do this, the people who run the pools that take 1% of everything going on. Clever people, they don't need to get rich real fast, they know they'll get rich eventually. But if your computer's gonna be on a few hours a day anyway, if you're not doing graphic intensive stuff most of the time, let your video card work on this. When you wanna play a game, when you're going to do video editing, something like that, just stop the program from running. You can be in control of when you start it up and when it stops. Have fun with this if you decide to give it a try. You can probably set it up in an hour or so. Again, I'll link to probably everything you need down below this video. Very good website, Crypto Badger, that should be able to talk you right through it in pretty good detail. Just don't get carried away. It'll stay fun. Maybe you'll make a few dollars. You can keep checking back for my next video or you can click that subscribe button and the bell next to it. You'll get notified when my videos go up. See you on the next review. Epic review guy